Coming up on Inside Walker Football, the Carriers return home for just the second time this season as they play host to rival Georgia Southern for homecoming. Inside Wofford Football, presented by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by John. After a little bit of a slow start, the Terriers crank up the offense in the second quarter as Mitch Allen tosses a touchdown pass and runs for another to give Wofford a four-point lead at the half. But in the third quarter, the Eagles score 16 straight points. And while the Terriers are in the lead to five midway through the fourth quarter, they cannot get any closer as Georgia Southern wins it 26-21. Hello and welcome to Inside Walford Football, everyone. A packed house on hand for homecoming. And the Terriers and Eagles play a tightly contested football game that comes down to the fourth quarter. But ultimately, Walford makes a couple of costly mistakes that cost it a chance at his first Southern Conference victory of the season. Georgia Southern got the scoring started on its first possession with a 14-yard touchdown pass, but Walford answered early in the second quarter as Mitch Allen found Justice Joslin on a quick slant for a 9-yard touchdown to tie the game at 7. After an eagle goal gave them the lead, Walford took its first lead with under 2 minutes to play in the half as Mitch Allen fought his way in for a 3-yard touchdown to give the Terriers a 4-point lead at the break. But the third quarter proved to be the decisive quarter for Georgia Southern as it scored a pair of touchdowns and added a field goal to go up 26-14, entering the fourth. Mitch Allen's second TD pass of the game about minutes into the final quarter cut the lead to 26-21, but the Terriers got the ball deep in Eagles territory late. However, they turned the football over trying to make something happen, and the Eagles were able to spoil homecoming by knocking off the Terriers. Final score, 26-21. When we come back on Inside Football, we'll take a look at the first half highlights as the Terriers turn to their quarterback to lead them back in the second quarter. Stay with us, everyone. News Channel 7, Hardy, Spartanburg Regional and Food Lion, caring for the Carolina. At nearly 90 years of age, most people are ready to slow down. Fannie Ruth Hyatt is not one of those people. Fannie is always looking to help a person in need. A selfless community cornerstone with an overwhelming love for the people. If you know a worthy recipient of our award, send us a letter to 250 International Drive, Spartan, North Carolina, 29303, or email us at WSPA.com. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Welcome back to Inside Walford. Bears and Eagles find themselves fighting for their conference lives, and it shows early on with the effort for each team. Let's take a closer look at the first half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. Georgia Southern in the white, dark and numbers, blue helmets going left to right. This time they're going to come with a reverse and coming near side, good yards to the 40, 45, 50, near sideline, 40, 35, and then jumped out of bounds at the 30-yard line is Jameer Valentine. Second and eight from the Terrier 15, twins left, single man right, Chapel again, flat pass far side over there by Valentine at the 10 to the 5, stretches out for the goal line, touchdown. 12-16 to play in the first quarter, Eagles 7, Terriers nothing. Third and 3 from the 27, two receivers right, one left, Chapel back to throw, he will be sacked. Keaton Thompson nails him back at the 20-yard It is fourth down. Keaton Thompson came off the edge. Had nobody in his way and blindsided the quarterback. Third down and eight from the Eagle 46, trailing seven to nothing midway through the first quarter. Play action. Allen, time to throw. Puts it up near side. Caught by Joslin. First down at the 32. He'll be sent. 
Down at the 31. Fourth down and six from the Eagle 27 right hash. Single back Scott, two receivers left, one right. Play action Allen. Rolls to his left, throws, leaping catch, but an incomplete ball as the receiver, Brenton Burson, was out of bounds. Mitch the gun, backs flank him either side, pitch near corner, plenty of room for Rucker along the sideline, 20, 25, 30, cuts it inside, 40, to the 50, has a blocker at the 40, 30, he's to the 25, dragged down from behind inside the 20 at the 19, a long run. For Mike Rucker, Laron Scott, the corner, was the last man shot. And boy, did Brenton Burson get downfield and lock up one of the DBs to give Rucker more room. Two receivers left, one right, fake of the dive. Again, pitch near corner. Rucker splits defenders at the 15, takes it to the 10. Allen out of the gun, single back on third and short. Throws a slant pattern toward the end zone. Touchdown! Just as the catch. Excellently thrown ball that time by Mitch Allen. Justice may have double clutched it a little bit, but he secured it. Terriers are on the board. 13.49 to play in the first half. Terriers seven, Georgia Southern seven. Single back, handoff for Bono, slants right, breaks first down 45, 50 down to the Terrier 46. Three receivers split left, two to the right, empty backfield. Chapel out of the gun, he will be sacked. Back at the 32, he met Paul. With his first sack of the year as the pocket collapsed around Lee Chapel. Snap on the way, spot down. Has the distance and career long field goal for Adrian Mora of 47 yards. Reed comes short, split to the right. That's the short side of the field. Richardson in motion right. Terriers run the end around Reed. He looks to turn the left corner. First down 30, 35, out of bounds at the 40. First down. Wins left, single man right. Shotgun for Allen. Fakes the dive. Pitch near corner. There's room. 45 40. Alex Dunmire, 35. Chucked out of bounds at the 31, but he's got a first down of 17 yards. Eagles, three down linemen, six in the box. Fake of the dive. Allen pitches near corner again. Dunmire along the line. Terriers looking to go ahead. There's the snap. Allen fakes the dive. He is wrapped up in the backfield. Breaks the tackle. Dives for the goal line. Touchdown. Oh, what a run. Mitch Allen, that might get this team going. As, uh, he made a man miss. They had him dead to rights in the backfield. And then he showed a little uh, physicality, if will, getting in the end zone. We have reached the half here at Gibbs Stadium on homecoming Saturday. And the Terriers take a lead into the locker room. Your halftime score, the Wofford College Terriers 14 and the Georgia Southern University Eagles 10. Coming up, we'll take a look at a guy who's had to be patient his career at Walford, and this season proves to be no different. Stay with us, everyone. Carrier fans, here's your chance to win a pair of tickets to an upcoming athletic event. Be the first caller to 597-4110. Leave your name and phone number in the message, and you could be a winner. Compliments from the South Carolina Education Lottery. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizza is not a slogan. It is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa, Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new cinnamon. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough cinnamon pie? Fabulous! A cinnamon pie free. They pick up their games, teams, and pick up the pace. Enterprise salutes NCAA student athletes for picking us all. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. Justice J hasn't made a ton of catches in his four years at Walford, but the ones he's made have been big ones, likely with more to come as his senior season moves on. Let's take a look at the senior wide receiver in our Terror in the Spotlight presented by Papa John's. In high school, Justice Joslin once caught four touchdowns in a almost halfway through his fourth year at Walford. He has five touchdown grabs total, one in each of his first three years and two so far this year. The lack of trips to the end zone doesn't necessarily speak to a lack of production as much as a product of the Terriers' run-oriented offense. 
requires much more out of its receivers than just catching passes. It's humbling, especially for a receiver. Um, we want to catch the ball. We want the ball in our hands. I want to score. Um, but this offense requires us to block a lot. We do throw the ball, and usually when we do throw the ball, it's a time for us to make a play and make a difference in the game. A year ago, Joslin took advantage of one of those limited opportunities to catch of the year. A diving catch made! I don't really know how to describe it. It was, it was a, I watched the film, and I'm like, wow, that was a pretty good catch, and I can't believe that was me. I was blessed to be able to pull that one in. Gosh, I may have my eyes closed. For all I know. What a grab! Entering his senior season, Joslin was primed to be the Terriers' top target, that's but it, it pulled hamstring it. about a week before the first game. Caused him to miss the first two games. It was tough um, and also humbling. Uh, I was looking forward to being the guy, and I've worked, I worked through the summer, worked through camp, and it happened, I believe, maybe a week and a half before camp was over, and it put me back, man, three, four weeks. But in a game back, Jocelyn caught this 35-yard touchdown pass against Chattanooga. It definitely felt good, yeah, definitely being out for a few games and getting back in the flow. It just felt right. I felt like I was a part of the team, felt like I was helping out. After college, Jocelyn hopes to continue playing football somewhere, somehow, but right now, his primary focus is on helping the win football games one catch or one block at a time. Hi, I'm Meredith Fox and I'm a junior from Johnson City, Tennessee. You're watching Inside Wofford Football. Go Terriers! Coming up, we'll take a look at the second half highlight. The Terriers struggle in the third quarter only to try to make a comeback in the fourth. Stay with us, everyone. Matters TV is brought to you by Spartanburg Regional. Spartanburg Regional now offers an online program that allows patients to access to their physician. By logging on to MyRegionalHealth.com, they can request prescription refills, maintain medical records, and leave messages. Dr. Brandy Harden explains. It's great for anybody who needs to keep track of all their medical problems that are ongoing, that are resolved, um, keep an update of what medicines they're taking. Private and secure site, MyRegionalHealth.com provides convenience for those on the go. So they can pull their BlackBerry out, they can get online, they can send an email to their physician, get a response back. For more information or physician referral, call 864-560-7999 or visit MyRegionalHealth.com. Health Matters TV, I'm Allison Hatcher. Health Matters TV was brought to you by Spartanburg Regional. Welcome back to Inside Walford Football. The Terriers find themselves in a position they haven't been too often this season, with the lead going into the third quarter. How do they respond? Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Here's Mark Hauser and Tom Henson on the call. Trips right, a single man left. Chapel out of the gun with a single back. Hand off Robinson, slanting left. 45 keeps his feet. Defenders to the 30. Second down and five. Hand off. Robinson up the gut. Breaks tackles. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Dorian Robinson goes 24 yards, and Georgia Southern seesaws ahead. 11.07 to play third quarter at Gibbs Stadium. Georgia Southern 7 for 14. Second down and seven from the 23. Play action for Allen. Under fire. Heaves it deep over the middle for Burson. Got it at the 45. Dragged down at the Georgia Southern 40 by the safety. Derek Hyden. A long pass play from Allen to Burson. Georgia Southern showing a 3-3 front. Allen running the option. Left. 35. Turns the corner. Fumbles the ball as he's tackled at the 32. Fourth and five. Terriers from the 34. Fake of the dive. Allen runs the option left. Slips a man in the backfield. Booms his way to the 32. And he will be short of the first down. And Georgia Southern is going to take over on downs. Receivers left. And there's a pass to one of them. Urbano is a blocker out front. 40, 35, near sideline, 30. Out of the gun, Chapel with three receivers. Time initially, but now the pocket breaks down. Good night. He's sacked back at the 33. Fourth and long. Alex Goldry has his third sack of the year. Came off the blind side. This will be a 50-yard attempt from the left hash by Mora. Snap is there. Spot is down. Kick on the way. A line drive with the distance. It's good. 
Six minutes and 13 seconds to play in the third quarter. Eagles 20. Wofford 14. Two receivers left, one right, a wing left. And Allen, here comes the blitz. He's going to roll left in trouble on the run. He tosses it and it's intercepted and returned to the 25 to the 23 by Darrell Pasco. Mitch Allen with an ill advised throw, and the Eagles are going to have great field possession off the pick. Trips right, a single left, a single back. Chapel play action, throws for us far side. Williford takes it to the 20. On second and goal from the three, Urbano slants left on the carry, takes it to the one, stretches out. Touchdown, Eagles. Adam Urbano. Chapel drops the snap, it's loose on the turf, and that play will end with absolute points. Georgia Southern fails on the two-point conversion. Georgia Southern 26, Terriers 14. One receiver right, two to the left, out of the gun, Allen. And a handoff looking to turn left corner. 15-20, 25 out to the 28. Michael Scott with the carries. Richardson, the tight end in motion right. Second nine, Allen run. Thought about the pitch, now he'll keep to the 35. Third down and six. There's the snap. Chapel back to throw. Pocket breaks down, and he'll be sacked back at the 24-yard line. One of the Terriers' helmets popped in the air. It was Alex Goldry, but a Met ball is the, the quarterback, and it's fourth down. In motion right. Rucker out of the wing bone. He'll get the toss. Far corner splits defenders. Rucker booms his way down to the Eagle 47. In motion left, the tight end, Inman. Play action. Allen pumps. Throws toward the goal line. Caught by Burson at the one. And he drops a tackler in. That's a touchdown. 10.47 to play in the ball game. Eagles 26. Terriers 21. Second down and five from the 32 in the center of the field. Allen takes the snap. Hand off. Scott slips two tackles and bowls his way across the 35 for a first down. Second down and a yard. Man in motion left. Now back to and off Urbano, he is thrown for a loss. Gary Blunt got in there and stopped him at the 44. At the 17, Edwards awaiting the snap. He bobbles it at the 30, picks it up, and he shanks it. The ball's going to be caught by Blake Wiley and returned, and Wiley's going to go out of bounds at the 36. The play by Blake Wiley. A minute 40 to 7 to go, trailing 26 to 21. Trips right. Hand off up the middle, Scott. Good room to the 40. Trips right. Fake of the dive to Scott, flat pass thrown by Allen. Rucker has it far side at the 30, 25. On the right hash, three receivers left. Allen runs the out, pitches behind Rucker, who has trouble falling on the ball. It's loose, and the Eagles have the football. Tavares Williams comes up with it, a poor pitch, and the Terriers give it up on the turnover. And that should seal it. A defensive end completely blew the play up. Terriers trying to make something happen. Trying to get it over to Mike Rucker. Ruck couldn't fall on the football, and Georgia Southern's got it. They can take a couple of knees and get on the bus back to states for a happy group. Visitors go away happy. The Georgia Southern University Eagles 26, and the Wofford College Terriers 21. We caught up with Coach Ayers after the game. Coach, obviously you hate to lose, but did you see some improvement from Chattanooga a week ago to today's game? Well, there was definite improvement, there's no doubt. Uh, played really hard, uh, made a lot of good plays, did a lot of good things, but uh, could have been points in the game. Uh, we didn't tackle as well as we needed to. Uh, we didn't execute as well as we needed to. We're a football team that's in search of. We got better. That's the positive news. Uh, we got better uh, this week versus last week in all three phases. Uh, opportunity to win the game, didn't do it, and that one's over. It was over about 10 minutes ago. So the challenge that we face ahead is a big one, uh, no doubt about it. There, there's some outstanding football teams left to play. Um, we've got an open date, which we desperately need because we're, uh, we're a little as far as the team, and uh, hopefully we can get healthy and uh, have two real good weeks of practice and, and get these guys ready for the challenge of App State. Is job one for the coaching staff, other than X's and O's, to, to keep confidence up? Well, there, there's no doubt. When, when you have a young football team, the, the mindset, uh, the attitude is critical, and uh, we're going to have to work on that probably as hard as the X's and the O's. 
but uh, for the most part, I think we've got a, a, a great group of guys that are going to be willing to see this thing through to the end. Uh, we're in a position that we haven't been in for a long, long time, but uh, due to youth and due to injuries and some other things, uh, we're where we are. But that being said, we're going to fight the fight till the end. We're going to become a better football team week to week and see where it takes us. You know, you often talk about players making plays, and Mitch made a huge one scoring that first half touchdown. Right, right. Did he try to do a little bit a couple times in that second half? Well, I, I don't think that. I, I think what happened was uh, some things occurred, a missed block here or there, and, and all of a sudden uh, you, you put the quarterback in a bad situation. I thought he played a great game, threw the ball extremely well, made some big plays for us, and, uh, and he was – as hard as you could possibly want a, a guy to go for you. Uh, he's a winner. Uh, he's doing um, a great job, and uh, what we've got to do is is help him. We, we've got to make sure that uh, we give him things that, that are going to give him an opportunity to be successful and us be successful. Coach, we appreciate you in two weeks. Thank you. Head coach Mike Ayers on this week's Terrier defeat at the hands of Georgia Southern 26-21. to Let's hear from some of the players. It's disappointing, you know. Um, I thought I thought we played hard. I thought we played a lot better than we did last week. Um, it just wasn't enough. Still didn't make enough good plays. And we still made a lot of mistakes. Except one to swallow. We should have had that one. It's hard, but I believe so. You know, it, it hurt. Thought we had everything down. Just not used to losing. It's a hard thing to come by. But um, the positive thing is when the SoCon, you know, we run the table from here, we still have a chance to to keep going. Let's take a look at the final game statistics. First downs off and walk with 16, Georgia Southern 17 rushing yards. The Carriers with the edge, 234 versus 148 passing yards. The Eagles with the advantage, 187 to 83. Total yards, Georgia Southern with the slight edge, 335 to 317. Time of possession, Georgia Southern with the advantage, 31 minutes and 44 seconds. Just over 28 minutes for Wofford. Each team commits six penalties, but the key stat. Turnovers. Wofford turns the football over twice. Georgia Southern does not turn the football over at all. Let's take a look at some scores from throughout the SOCON. This past Saturday, Appalachian State knocked off in overtime. Close, close football game down in the low country with the Mountaineers get the victory. Elon knocks off Furman 19 to 12. The game not decided until the final second. And Sanford gets the best of Western Carolina. 16 to 3. Your updated Southern Conference standings sitting Elon and Appalachian State. Each team comes in 2 and 0. Oh. Furman and Georgia Southern each 2 and 1 in conference play. Chattanooga is 1 and 1. Sanford is also 1 and 1 in conference play. The Citadel, Walford, and Western Carolina all still in search of their first conference victory of the season. Let's take a look at the White Pine Street Exxon Play of the Week. It comes on the first play of the second quarter is Michael Rucker. Finds some running room, and he rumbles 65 yards all the way down to the Eagles' 18-yard line to help set up the Carriers' first touchdown of the game. And for his efforts, Michael Rucker gets play of the week. Stop hunting. Start finding. Choose the AT&T Real Yellow Pages to find just what you need. No other book has more complete ads and up-to-date listings. Papa John wants everybody to know why our pizza's better. Better ingredients, better pizzas. And it is a way of life. So he's bringing it right to him. Papa's in the house. Introducing Papa John's new Cinepie. Our fresh dough loaded with sweet cinnamon topping. Get one free when you buy a large two-topping pizza, just $11.99. What do you think of the fresh dough Cinepie? Cinepie free. Welcome back to Inside Wofford Football. This is where we like to take an inside look at some of the happenings off the field of play. And this week we head inside the locker room to listen to what Coach Ayers had to say to his guys just before the Georgia Southern game. Take a listen. This 
game will be decided by fundamentals, execution, and effort. Simple as that. You can't be the best you can be if you're going out there and you're walking on pins and needles. What we've got to do is play focused and play relaxed. Play focused and have fun. Those, those can go together. Are we where we want to be? No. But we can change that to death. To death. I think we got great players. I think we got players that can compete at any level against anyone. And I've said that to you. I don't want to hear my bad. I don't want to hear I'm sorry. All I want to do is this. Play the game. Don't talk it. Don't preach it. But play the game. Play the game with every bit of God-given talent that you've got. If you leave anything on that field, shame on you. If you miss a block, get back on the block. Get back on the block. Don't stay down. Don't lay down. Get up and fight. Get up and fight again and again and again. We don't stop till it's over. Everybody understand? Yes, sir. All right. I'll see you out there. Man, that is good stuff. Makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Yeah. Ready to go play some football. All right, now let's take a look at next week's opponent brought to you by Blue Eagle Equipment. First of all, the Terriers will take next weekend off. But in two weeks, they will play host to Appalachian State. A year ago, the Mountaineers won in Boone. But you might recall two years ago, the Terriers shocked the defending national champs. 42-31 when they came down the mountain to play at Gibbs Stadium. This year, Appalachian State is off to a 2-0 start, but they are 2-0 in conference play. 2-2 overall, 2-0 in conference play, including a hard-fought 30-27 overtime win at the Citadel on Saturday. And yes, Armani Edwards is still the Mountaineers' starting quarterback. Man, it seems like that guy has been there for more than a decade. He's still there. Let's take a look. At some of the particulars, Appalachian State at Wofford Gibbs Stadium. October the 17th kickoff is set for 3 o'clock, and it should be a great football game and a great opportunity for the Terriers to get back on track. For now, we say so long and hope to see you right back here for more Inside Wofford Football in two weeks. Inside Wofford Football by Wild Wing Cafe, Spartanburg Regional Sports Medicine, Milliken, Enterprise Rent-A-Car, the AT&T Real Yellow Pages, and by Papa John's.